As spring practice is underway at Arkansas, I actually want to talk about the offensive system of Kendall Browles. And this is a topic that we've touched on in the past in several different videos, but more of how K.J. Jefferson fits within that offense and why he's such a good quarterback for Browles' offense. So I want to do a little bit more of a deep dive approach and talk about the philosophy behind Kendall Browles' offense and then just kind of the X's and O's in, in, in general. And take it with a grain of salt, right? This is just my opinion from the outside kind of looking in and kind of based off a few different things. But I want to talk about what I think his philosophy is and, and you know why it's been successful. And then I want to talk about ways to defend this. So at the end of the video, we're going to have a few just actually breakdowns of clips and talk about how to defend this offense, but then how you kind of counter approach or counter attack uh, that defense and, 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 and beat that defense uh, if you are browse or the offensive system. So let's talk about browse the system. But before we do, I just want to encourage you all to consider subscribing to the channel. If you like any quarterback content, uh, help any football content in general we try to do some breakdowns and kind of put our uh, opinion on things and make it easy to understand so let's dive into it I, I, I think when you think about Browse's offense the first words that come to mind are warp speed right you hear people say warp speed fast tempo quick 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 right and that's true but I think it all comes down to the passing game the veer and shoot is built on the ability to throw the ball downfield. If you can throw the ball downfield, or at least have the potential, and you show that you can do it, that's really going to open up the run game because it's going to, going to restrict the defense from stacking the box. So the veer and shoot, the RPO system that Browse runs, right, it's really just a numbers game and a percentage game. Numbers game being how many guys are in the box. That's going to largely dictate the read if you keep, if you run, if you throw. And then it's going to come down to percentage game. So even if... Percentage game meaning if you keep making the right reads over the course of the game, even if the defense gets some stops, eventually you'll have more good reads than bad reads. That lead, that will lead to a successful offensive uh, system. Now, of course, when you play against better players, that percentage goes down, right? But what do I mean by that? So even if it looks like a bad read from our point of view, the quarterback is taught numbers game. If you have six in the box and you have seven guys to block, you get it. So even if the defense makes a good play, that's still a good read on the quarterback's part. You just trust over the course of the game, eventually you're going you're gonna to bust some runs there, right? So that's what I mean when I talk about percentage game and a numbers game. The quarterback is reading the numbers in the box. But philosophy-wise, oh, sorry, before I jump into that, you know, a little bit more on the RPO and just kind of the veer and shoot. It's a system that is trying to get the defense in no man's land, trying to make the defense defensive players make a bad read and set the defense up to fail, right? And you're going to have receivers running different option routes depending on what the actual play call is. And as far as the run game goes, you have the option to, of course, give it to the running back or the quarterback can take it. But in hindsight, it's a, it can be somewhat complex, but at the end of the day, they're just trying to get the defense to no man's land and get them the defense to make a bad decision and, and just keep the defense on their heels, right? Keep them from getting set. That's why they try to go so fast. And Whenever this offense doesn't work, whenever it gets shut down, which it does, right? It, it's I don't know the last time a, you know the beer and shoot offense has won a championship, and, but you can have success. But of course, when it gets shut down, it's usually the personnel doesn't fit. You can't convert in the red zone, right? Because the field gets shorter, or you're not very successful on third downs, or you get in third and longs, and so the threat of the RPO is gone. But that's why it's important to have a quarterback like KJ Jefferson for when you are in third and longs and there's no RPO threats, the threat it's a straight pass threat then you have the ability to make those completions. So let's look at the offensive um, stats that Browse has accumulated over the past several years, just the past three years, just because I think that's probably the most uh, freedom he's had over the offense because before that, of course, he was at Baylor with his dad, uh, U of H with Holgerson, and then FAU with, uh, what's his name, Kiffin, right? I think I'm getting that right. I don't think I missed anything. But let's look at some Arkansas, the past two years of Arkansas, and then uh, at Florida State. So last year was, was a, I think, the perfect way Browse wants to run this offense. They ran the ball 63% of the time, 314 total passes, 588 pass, uh, rushing attempts. K.J. Jefferson had 146 of those 588 attempts. And I think that really shows the offense is at its best when the quarterback is at the center of the whole offense, not just the passing game, but the running game as well, right? K.J. led the team in rushing yards and touchdowns on the ground, I believe. They had more rushing yards than passing yards at 20, over 2,900 yards on the ground to 2,700 yards passing. And the first downs where it jumps out as well, they ran the ball 162 times and they passed it 104 times. And again, take this with a grain of salt because a lot of these plays are RPO plays, so you have the option to run or pass. But still, that's a, that's a high percentage of running 
of, of running plays, which is great in that offense because they were successful throwing too. But first downs, maybe they can get a bit predictable. Uh, at least that's kind of what the Arkansas fan base has seemed to say. Let's go to season 2020. They ran the ball 58% of the time. And I, I, I didn't include the sack play, so that might be more like 57-ish or so, give or take. But still, they ran the ball not as much. Uh, they had more passing than rushing yards in 2020. And on first downs, they actually passed more than they ran by 12 plays. At 2019 at Florida State, he ran the ball, or they ran the ball 54% of the time. And on first downs, they threw one more time than they ran. So I think that tells me that Browse wants to be a bit more balanced on, on these first down plays, at least from looking at the stats. But with last year being his best year offensively, uh, I think I think it kind of goes to show you want to run, run, run. What the beer and shoot is, right? You set up the running game by passing the ball, and these stats go to show it. So, again... If you're if you're you know from the outside looking in watching in a play may may seem like a bad play but in reality it's potentially setting a better play up down the road but it does help to have a, a quarterback like KJ Jefferson uh, who you can build and center the offense around so just real quick that's kind of the the surface level but a little bit deeper dive approach as far as the philosophy and as far as what Browse is trying to do they're trying to one have explosive plays of course but they're trying to build that over a course of a game. And they're trying to do that with the threat of passing the ball and then hoping that that gets the defense out of position and they're able to run, run their RPO system, right? So let's look at two plays uh, real quick before we end this video that show the defense stopping the ball or stopping the run. And then we will see a very, very similar defensive approach and Arkansas actually chooses to pass. And it, it's a great example of why having an elite receiver in this, why having an elite receiver in this, um, excuse me, in this offensive system is, is huge and can really uh, screw up the defense as far as not letting them stack the box. So let's look at two quick clip or two quick clips, and I promise we'll be done after that. All right, quick example how you can kind of neutralize this, uh, this this RPO veer and shoot style of offense if you're a defense. So let's go ahead and watch the play here. It's going to be a, a several yard loss, right? What, four five yard loss on the run play. And then let's look at what happened, how Bam was able to do that. Because pre-snap look, it's actually the right read, right? So we got an RPO look, so run pass option. And I'm kind of giving away. But pre-snap, this safety is a little farther back here. So if you're just looking here, we got 6v6. So it's kind of the right read here to give. But what Bama does and, and how you can beat this is you can sneak a seventh guy in the box, right? So right before the, pre, right before the snap happens, they sneak that seventh guy in the box here. And so now we have six guys trying to block seven guys, which of course uh, usually does not end up well. And then Bama is able to man up on everyone. They have one up top safety. So you have a cover one uh, man under scheme here. And so again, just an example of how you can beat this, this veer and shoot slash RPO system here. Sneak in that seventh guy in the box. And if you can man up everyone on the outside, then you're good to go, right? Watch it from here. Again, just too many guys to block. Uh, not to mention if 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 they can get off their blocks, um, then even if it's 6v6, then they have the advantage. But again, numbers game, it was probably the right read, but Bama does a good job sneaking the defender in. So let's go ahead and watch a, a play very similar, but it's a play of how you can beat this defensive uh, scheme here if you have an elite receiver, which Arkansas did in school. All right, so here's a quick example of why and how it's so hard to stop an offense like Arkansas whenever you have an elite receiver. So it's going to be a very similar defensive scheme to the play we just watched. A little differently, but very similar. Uh, let's watch the play, and then we'll break it down in a bit more detail. Boom. Okay, so just like the last play, eventually there becomes seven guys in the box, right? Uh, I rewind it too far. Let's go to here. I apologize. Give me one second. Be patient with me. Okay, here. Boom. So eventually there becomes seven guys in the box, just like last play. So as opposed to running against those seven guys in the box, this time they throw. So we have four DBs. They start with two up top safeties. They creep one down, just like they did in the last play. But you see it's, it, it's kind of different in the last play, but similar. Right, there ends up being seven guys in the box. This safety creeps down to take on man here. So you got, again, cover one, man under. If they were to run the ball, then Arkansas only has 6v7. Just like, remember, the last play was 6v7. Uh, Bama got a, a five-yard loss. This time, as opposed to running the ball, Cage decides to take a shot to his elite receiver, makes a play, right? So then the defense will think twice about putting seven guys in the box 
uh, whenever they can do that. And, and, you know, the more guys you can keep out of the box and this Kendall Bryles offense, the better. So just a quick example of how you can beat it. Well, have, or how you can beat this defense, have an elite receiver like Traylon Burks uh, to go do that and spread the field open. So just an example of how you can beat that defense. So just to recap Browse's system briefly, we talked about the importance of up-tempo and being at warp speed, right, as you hear people say. Uh, we also talked about the importance of knowing how many defenders are in the box and why it's important for this type of system uh, to get defenses or defensive players out of position. Then we talked about why we think that this system, and, and I think a lot of people would agree, it stems on having the ability to push the ball downfield so the box isn't able to get stacked and you can open up the run game, which Browse is trying to do. And we've looked at several different videos and, and kind of breakdowns of how you can stop it and how you can kind of beat a, a defense trying to stop it. But I want to hear from you. What do you think about Browse's system? What did I miss on? What are the, you know, just keys you think are important to talk about Browse's system? Let us know in the comments below and let us know what other type of football breakdown videos you'd want to see. Again, this isn't some type of I know I put deep dive in the title, but it's not some type of um, you know rocket science approach. We try to keep it surface level so we can all understand, uh, including me, because a lot of this football stuff can be over my head if I deep dive into it too much. So again, thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe, all the you know YouTube stuff. We'll see you next time on the next quarterback-related video.